This playthrough is rated T for teen. Oh, little man on your trike, moving and moving, constantly moving, never stopping, but never going anywhere. Greetings and salutations, viewers, while I'm here with a new game for my library, and this time it's Siberia. Uh, published by Microids in 2002 and created by the late, great Benoit Sokal. Or Sokol. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing it. I know, you know, don't uh, disrespect the dead. Yeah, by the time of this recording, the Benoit just passed away not too long ago, and I thought I'd do a respect for him by doing one of his more famous outings. Obviously in Belgium, or Belgium, which is where he's more famous from. He's a Belgian artist and comic book and, and other such things. And this is what he's more well known for in like the West and stuff like that is Siberia. Well, well known. Not, um, it, uh, as you know, this is a, well, as you, you don't know, so I'm explaining to you. This is a point click adventure game based in a strange, strange place with uh, a lot of fantastical elements, which made more sense in 2002 when this game came play, took place. Nowadays, you kind of see that everywhere. But this game has a certain charm to it being a point and click adventure game. It was at that early age of the PC era where, like, a PC has been around for a while, but the early, kind of like late 90s, early 2000s, where adventure games really kind of popped out for quite a while because, you know, they they would look great, but then take a whole lot of power to look great. Well, depending on the game, actually. There were some that were pretty uh, graphically intensive. But they were everywhere for a long time. They're still around now, but not as prevalent because, unfortunately, they don't make as much money as which is we like. Well, as much as I like point and click games, I know perfectly well they're not they're not money makers, and people don't want to put the effort into them. If you do, you're making you're definitely making it a project of either art or love, or you're trying to tell a unique story with those elements involved. So this is definitely a blast of the past. So before we get started, let's check some options here. I actually had some trouble running this earlier because uh, this. Because of the 3D rendering uh, machine uh, mechanism for this, or the the program that this uses, if you use anything higher than like 1900 and or uh, a screen resolution of like 1900 and 1080 or something like that, the th the the game can't render the awesomeness and stretch it out that much. So I had to tone it down a bit. It took me a while to figure that out, but uh, okay, yep, 32 bit, yeah. Anything? I think that I want that for this. So. Okay, and then we can watch the credits. Obviously, we'll get that at the end. Cutscenes, if you want to watch them again in the 2002 glory. But, uh, well, I'll talk more about this game as the game goes on and just about the the works and when I played this and everything like that. I think I bought this, not right when it came out, but shortly there afterwards. I was one of those guys that bought, like, all the adventure games when they came out. I was obsessed with them at the time. So, I mean, I still like them, but, you know. Anyway, let's start the game and start off where this strange adventure begins.
Well, who knew that a little little town of the French Alps could host a magical world of automatons? Although magical, when all they're being used, at least at the beginning of this game, is a death procession. Now, who's this lady? Why is she here in this strange town? Well, we'll find out eventually. All right, this is a standard point-and-click adventure game. The keyboard, I think, for the most part, is not needed, um, except for, obviously, to get to the menu and stuff like that. Um, this little reticle circle here is what we use to, if we click on something, and we'll move around to that location. Um, if it's highlighted, that means we can move into a new room. And then if the icon changes a bit, we can use it for other things. So, like, for example, this part here with the little hand means we can check it or grab it or look at it, depending on the item. Looks like a uh, note on there. So, ooh, what's this? Welcome to Valdeline. Hmm. The world of capital, uh, the world capital of mechanical toys. Let yourself be transported by the magnificent landscape surrounding Val Deline, a small, charming town tucked away in the Alps, and by Vorleberg Manufacturing, the, whose exceptional savoir faire and the specialized world of luxury mechanical toys in the top towns is at the root of Val Deline's reputation around the world. For 800 years, the Vorleberg family has passed its knowledge from generation to generation, perfecting the art of that particular branch of clockmaking that breathes life into the complex network of cogs and spindles that makes up a Automatons. Its creative wonders once defied belief and drew the admiration of young and old alike. People would come from across Europe for a chance to vie for the right to own one of these fantastic toys. At the heart of a mechanical automaton is its motor. A series of spindles are set in motion of, to music via a set of cogs. Attached to the spindles are cams that are shaped in the image of the music. In turn, they command a series of rods which control the gestures of the toys at their hips. Then we got a little picture of the unequal Samuel Fair. And uh, then we've got uh, some guys on uh, playing uh, violins or something like that. So, And then there's a little click here that lets us either, if we click the up version, we leave this little uh, brochure, or we can click this to continue on. Automaton construction takes place in three stages, modeling, mechanics, and casing. The process requires the participation of 20 different specialized trades. In its heyday, the Vorleberg factory employed over 100 craftsmen Mechanics, watchmakers, sculptors, tailors, and dressmakers working in separate workshops. Vorleberg automatons all have two distinguishing features in common. The high precision me mechanisms and the characteristic Vorleberg wind-up wind key. Uh, that's classic, if anything, the wind-up key. Devising and assembling each model is, at, is a meticulous process. Standard toys are constructed from local wood, while the most sophisticated ones use more precious resources, such as ebony imported from Madagascar. Despite competition from Asia, the Vorleberg's never came in to the temptation to produce electrical robots and chose to continue their exploration of the mysteries of perpetual mechanical motion. You know, there is something kind of magical to that style, although th though that style tends to lead more towards horrific styles because of how alien they can move, depending on how good the works are, you know? I mean, Five Nights at Freddy's is a good example of that type of... I mean, these are different from that, but the whole mechanical instead of being electrical. You know what I mean. Unequaled civil fare. The Vorleberg's have come a long way from their simple jointed puppets of yesteryear. Today their creations are so lifelike one has the impression that they can think for themselves. The first signs of puppet manufacture in Val Valdeline go back to the 13th century. While there was no was maybe no definite definite puppet industry at the time, Hermann Vorleberg's renown was recognized even in the court of Europe. And then they have a copyright because they're actually using a picture from actual um, text or whatever. From the Archives of the Art and History Museum, Luzane, Switzerland. Uh, let's see what it says there. Uh, I can't. Vermanis? Is that L or is that B? Vermanis, Prusse, Regime, Bizetans, A Propone, Exempla, Macarium, Paparum, Ques Ab, E Petit, Ebonelium, Principium, Ludus. It's been forever since I've studied uh, Latin, so you'll have to forgive my pronunciations. Vaudelinus Anno MCC XXXX2. I forgot what the Roman numerals were for that, so forgive me. The artisan H. Vogelberg and servants presenting his puppet to the emperor himself. It was not until the uh, uh, 17th century, I had to think for a second, man, it's been forever since I studied Roman numerals, uh, that Charles Vogelberg founded the Vogelberg mechanical toy and puppet factory, and industrial activity in the valley really took off. The reputation of Val Valladolid and its famous toys then just kept growing and growing. 
Charles Ro uh, there's a picture. Charles Vorleborg was one of his creations. A large part of production was devoted to producing theatrical puppets at the time. Was kind of like a Pinocchio type of thing. Uh, the picture is at from the Archives Art and History Museum, Luzane in Switzerland. The turn of the 20th century is Val Valdelin's golden age of ex as expressed in the factory's impressive architecture in the main houses of the town. The Vorleborg reputation crossed the oceans, dispatching its fine precision mechanism across the globe to delight buyers who began to believe that Vorleborg automatons had a life of their own. Uh, then there's another picture with an old man. Um, Rudolf Vorleborg managed the business during the golden years of the Vorleborg factory. Uh, the copyright is private collection. And it says uh, Rudolf Vorleborg, 1881? I can't really quite tell. It's so because of the way that the screen monitor works. I think it says like 1949? But anyway. Since the end of the Second World War, the destiny of the factory has been in the hands of Rudolf Stoddard and of Orwilberg, the last and sole descendant of the prestigious line of craftsmen. This inspiring figure negotiated the business through the, uh, through the end of the war. She breathed new life into production by creating works of art to appeal to experts and enthusiasts alike. Orwilberg automatons became rare collector's items with highly innovative mechanisms of unequaled ingeniousness, even to this day. Well, did you like that exposition dump? No. Uh, you could easily I don't, um, be be uh, be aware of some of the information we learned from that little uh, um, log thing. Let's see what happens if we click our um, suitcase. I really don't have the strength to take this suitcase any further. I wonder who can help me. Our first objective: get the <laughs> exactly get the stuff up the uh, up the thing. So let's take a look at our dialogue notebook. We can check our little thing there that says uh, Kate and help. So we need, um, oh, oops, I think, I think that's just supposed to give a suggestion that we need help for, cause yeah, it's not letting me click it. It's usually, it's either right click or left click, folks. Oh, we got a cell phone. Uh, oh man, this is old school. Look at this, 2000. Oh man, I wonder how small this thing is. Uh, but we don't have a, let's see where our memory stores. Dan, let's call Dan. I need help. Can I get my bag, please? Dan Foster isn't around to take your call right now, so please leave your message after the tone. Dang it. Probably no no good service out here. Anyone else? Ooh, let's call the office. I'm here. You have reached Mossman and Walmart Associates. We're sorry, but all our lines are busy. Please call back later. Nuts. Even in the future, nothing works. No, uh, it's just... Anything else? Hey, well, let's call mom. Hey, I made it to, I made it to France or the French Alps technically, but. Hmm. No, uh, didn't even get a signal. Okay. How about Olivia? I don't know who that is, but uh, it's time to call her and party. Come on, nothing, man. Can't reach anyone out here. What's the point of having a cell phone? It's almost like a horror game out here. Or is it a horror game? Okay, anyway. Let's uh, put up the phone. Nothing there, so, okay. Uh, let's look at our personal file. That's the brochure, I believe. Yeah, we can. Okay. So we got the brochure. And that means we can take the brochure and we can also consult the brochure by looking at, which pops this up again, for those of you curious. And then I think now and then we can go to the menu uh, and then we can save whatever but we don't need to do that right now so okay so we need to get our bag upstairs so and what most people do would back in the day they would uh, ring a little bell on the um, I think I mean they're they still have call bells but you know what I mean like maybe those who aren't familiar with old-time stuff uh, you would need help so yeah we can either go upstairs downstairs or check this little yeah there's a little um, Indicator there, so hmm. Now, what's this? A wind-up key. Well, the 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 uh, the, uh, the uh, little brochure did say something about having to wind up the to uh, the automaton. So let's see. So let's pick that up. Let's see what this does. Nothing. Yeah, it's not working because the automaton's not working. So I need a key. Well, the game pretty much tells you what you need to do. So if you didn't notice it already, so let's take the key. It's now an active item. So now we can use it on something. So obviously, yeah, see, the game will even tell you if something doesn't work. So it's not one of those games where you can use anything on anything and get an interesting bit of dialogue. This game, I wouldn't say is super serious, but 
Well, I mean, I guess it is, uh, but it's it's not a comedy game. Like comedy games tend to like do jokes where if you click stuff on stuff. This one's and this game's. I don't. I mean, there's a few complicated puzzles every once in a while, but it never gets. To I never found this game too ridiculous in terms of that. Oh yeah, and I did say earlier that it had been a while since I or may have had, but it had been a while since I'd done any like point and click stuff. The last one I did uh, was Dracula. I was saying earlier that it was like Secret of Monkey Island, but that wasn't true. And I did Dracula not too long ago, so eh, I can't uh, can't use that excuse. But anyway, use the key on him, and I'll activate the call bell. Even though we could easily click the bell, we could ding the thing ourselves. I mean, you don't, like the little thing on the top. All that's all it has to do to do it. But for some reason, we have to have the automaton do it. So, yeah, point and click a game logic, folks. Hello. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Wait, that lady wasn't there before. Oh, yeah, she would have been if we'd uh, walked on in, so. Uh, hello, good sir. Hi there. Hello there, ma'am. I need some help. Oh, I can ask him. Yeah, this is your dialogue option, so when you talk to people, you can use this to talk to them. So, my name is Kate. I would like a room. My company should have made a reservation in the name of Walker. The company is Marson and Lormont Associates. The name is Kate Walker? Of course, Miss Walker. You are in room six on the next floor up. Thank you. I mean, did you look at those arms when he popped up? You could tell there was some weird rendering in there. Like, either that or he's just supposed to be weirdly skinny because it looks like his arms are like, you go like snap him like in half like a twig, even though the top half of him looks like he's eating quite a bit. So, can I get some help? Could you possibly take my luggage up, please? Please do excuse me, Miss Walker. We have been neglecting our duties. Guests are so rare these days that we forget our manners. So you're the American woman? Is it true what people say? That you've come to buy the factory? Not factory. Anna's house. Hans' house. Excuse me? Would you quiet down, you mischievous little boy? Ah. Oh. I imagine our little town must disappoint you. You see, today is very sad for us. It's a day of mourning. Today is the funeral of Miss Anna. Momo sad, but Hans not dead. Hans long way away. Anna told Momo. Anna liked Momo very much. That's enough, Momo. Stop pestering the lady. Now go on, scram. Get out of here, you hear? Hey, what was his attitude? What was but I saying? Oh yes, Miss Anna. Such a great loss for Valle de Laine, it really is. Because now that she's dead, the factory will close. But you're here to stop that happening, aren't you? Our future is in your hands, Miss Walker. What? Anna Varlberg is dead? But yeah, leave it up to American woman to make like the poor guy carry her luggage that she couldn't do it herself. It does, I mean, she's not trying to come up with that. It just seems like that because can I get some help with my luggage? Here's your room. Yeah. I hope you like it, Miss Walker. I'll leave you to rest for the time being. You must have a lot of work to do. You know, the takeover of the factory is very good news for us here. It would make us very happy to see life return to our valley. If only you had seen Valadilen before. It was delightful. People came from all over the world to buy Vorlberg automatons. Ah, somebody has left you some mail, I see. Remember, if you need anything at all, we're not far away, Miss Walker. We? How many people are here? It's just you, right? But <clears throat> I think we could have talked to Hans earlier, I think, but it wouldn't. I'll try in the future to maybe not solve stuff as fast to get to the next objective. I probably should have looked around before asking for help, or at least waiting for the game to go, you know, tell us what to do. But now that we've talked to all this stuff, now we have a lot of, a few extra options there in our dialogue tree uh, for that, too. So we got the brochure, so we can do that. So, okay. So now, now let's see what the room has to offer. So we can leave. Let's see. Luckily, this game is a pixel hunty. Uh, back in the old days of point and click adventure games, some of the old ones, you could sometimes miss a, an objective by like not highlighting it properly. I remember this game being pretty lenient on the pixel hunting, so as long as you, in the general area, you can kind of tell what you need to do 
or where you need to go overall. So it's not. So right now, let's see. What I don't need that for the time being. What? what? You get to ah, whatever. Crazy lady. So let's see if we can leave the room. We can. Okay, but we don't need. We we will eventually because, well, we're I've, we're here to maybe buy the factory, or not buy the factory. So let's. Uh, I think if I remember, let's see if I can. No need to go down there. Okay. Let me see if double clicking does. Okay. In some games, you could like double click. Okay. Yeah, she runs if if you double click. <clears throat> some games will skip to the location. Others will have the character run on it. So let's see. Just see if there's anything to check or or examine. So okay. All right. Let's uh, grab this letter and see what it says. Apparently, someone was here or delivered it before I did. Or just put it in your blast, whatever. April 17th, 2002. Facts. To Kate Walker from Edward Marson. Marson and Lormont Associates. Law Practice. 51 West 50th Street, New York, New York. 10023. One, uh, one number 12458902. Dear Kate. Our client, the Universal Toy Company, is more than eager to see conclusions from the talks of Vogelberg. Manufacturing with view to take over in the days to come, and we have received notification to this effect. We are c counting on your undoubted qualities as a business lawyer to bring negotiations with Madame Anna Vorlberg, the current owner, to a close. Allow me to remind you that the Universal Toy Company is a multinational, is is a multinational which has a monopoly on the toy market. It is a Class A priority client who is also presenting Madame Vorlberg with a golden opportunity to sell a factory. You should remind her with of this fact in case she starts having last minute second thoughts before signing the purchase agreement. I am under no doubt that you will live up to your great expectations I have in you, Edward Marson. Well, we got a job to do, apparently. I We're... should tell Marson about the death of Miss Varlberg. I hope this isn't going to get too complicated. I can't see myself staying here too long. Yeah, we're going to need a column now, so, but let's not do that just yet. So, that is our next objective, but... Uh, no need to go down there. Let's, uh... Let's check around before we call our boss and tell him about what, uh, the news... Yeah, unfortunately, since this is, isn't as comedic as some other games I've played before, so it's going to... I'll try to add comedic moments when they're appropriate without being uh, too, uh... You know, what's the word? Without ruining the mood. So, yeah, let's take a look around the... Uh, around a bucket of mop there. What type of place is no this? No need to go down there. Oh, come on, lady. Where's your adventure, where's your adventure game uh, point No need to go spirit? down there. I think I have to call him because the game's not letting me really do anything else. So. No need to go down there. Yeah, that's the problem with serious ones is that, like, you kind of get similar dialogue in multiple cases, so you just have to kind of suffer through that. And they only have so many limitations, no obviously, need to go down and, there. Uh, when it came to uh, what they could do and everything like that. Despite no need to go down there. You're going to hear that a lot, aren't you, here, well, folks? Well, I can go down here, though, so... What is with that line of dialogue, anyway, so... Yeah, we can go... I don't think we can go outside yet. I'll wait for the storm to end before I step outside. Oh, well, yeah, it is raining, isn't it, so... Now let's check the... Now he's down here waiting for us to talk to him. Yeah, we could have walked down here and seen the kid, so... Oh, well. Let's see if there's anything to check out, so... Usually it'll highlight uh, with something if I can check it out, so... Yeah, back in this early day, not everything could be clicked on, so... Uh, so you kind of just... Uh, oh, yeah, the kid did drop those gears or whatever those were. Let's see what those are as we pick them up. Hmm. You know, like... Uh, yeah, standard cogs. Wasn't there a second one? Yeah, there was. Yeah, we're going to see... Uh, you, you get the theme yet, folks? <laughs> uh, okay. Anything else in here? Oh, let's see what he's messing with. Oh, hello. Looks like he was... Uh, was that already there, or did the kid scratch that into the table? If that That's fine mahogany. How dare that kid do such a thing? What's this? Another cog. Hmm. Well, it's like a pattern's forming, folks. Now, let's grab that. Let's see what uh, we've got here. Medium, tiny, small, or large. Let's take, see if we can... <coughs> no, looks like we can only... Uh, let's see. Large. I don't think I can do anything with this yet. I think this is more just to show... Yeah, see, I can't uh, affect it or anything like that. I can grab it, which I did. But, okay. 
keep that in mind. All right, anything else here? Nope. Okay. All right, run, run, Kate. No. Oh, oh, right. I have to remove the. Oh, I could have. Uh, it wouldn't let me use it on the dude himself. Uh, I assume I can't do anything with any of these cogs. Nope. And unfortunately, we're not going to get funny responses from it. So, oh well. Hello. I'm back again. Miss Walker. I'm back again. The guy's like, oh god, are the Americans back again? Hello, my name is Kate Walker, and of course, of course, Walker, room six, next floor up. I think she th he thinks I'm a crazy person or a crazy American. One of the probably a little column A, a little column B. I think I'm going to need your help again. Are you leaving already, Miss Walker? Should we bring down your luggage? No, no, I'm not leaving yet. It's just that. We would love to help, but just think what would happen if the telephone rang, or, or if a fax arrived, or if a customer came through the door. We don't have five minutes rest here. I'm sorry. Oh, it's okay. No biggie. Except you wanted him to help you with your luggage earlier, so... And we? Who else is here? No one else is here in five minutes. I think, you, I think you've got plenty of time. You just don't want to do it. You just don't want to deal with me. The young boy who was here earlier talked about uh, uh, Hans. Who is Hans? Uh, Momo was talking about Hans Vorlberg, Anna's younger brother. But he died a long time ago. Nobody here even met him. Hmm. Uh, sorry to hear they died alone, so... Uh, if a bad fate. How about, Momo? How about that kid? Seems a little um, special. Who is the boy who was drawing here earlier? Is he your son? Heaven forbid! No, no, not at all. <laughs> He's not a bad boy, no. Momo is just a little simple, that's all. What is his connection with Anna Varlberg? Momo is what you'd call the village idiot, and Anna took him under her wing. He must have reminded her of her younger brother, no doubt. And uh, birds of a feather stick together, don't they? You're implying that Anna Varlberg was a little bit slow as well? Heaven forbid, no, no, not at all. She was a real loner. She kept to herself. That's all. Well, Kate, trying to throw your your American sensibilities on this poor man who didn't even mean it. Talking about uh, talking about taking things out of context way too fast. But uh, she didn't seem that aggressive. But you can already tell a trend. Uh, automaton. I just love all these little mechanical robots. I've noticed there are tons of them here in Valadilen. Be careful what you say. Vorlberg automatons are not robots. If you want people to like you here, never ever pronounce the word robot. Uh, okay. Uh, what is the difference between an automaton and a robot, then? <laughs> uh, well, to tell you the truth, no one really knows. I mean, there is, but... Because uh, automatons are basically simple, simple mechanical men, while robots are fully, almost fully functioning beings that have, you know full movement and stuff like that. Although I guess it depends on the robot, but I could go into detail. And the fact that robot, let's say, uh, I forgot what the original, I think robot is, oh, I had to look it up again. The term robot is from like, it's either, it's not German. Uh, it's like Swiss or someone. I, I forgot, I'll have to look that up again. But uh, anyway, you know. Did you know Anna Varlberg yourself? Oh, why, of course I did. I, I mean, well, not really. She was a very great lady. We loved her very much. May she rest in peace. Mm. Yeah, thanks for the talk, dude. I would like to see my room now. Why, certainly, of course. Well, I could just go to the room. What, what was the concept? Were you going to make him take you back to the room or something like that? You crazy lady. Actually, what would... I, I guess technically we could take the call here if we really wanted to, but let's just go back to the room, so... Double click. Run! Run! Okay, you're not running. I don't know why. You're supposed to, but sometimes you run and sometimes you don't. And we gotta take forever to do the animation, so at least it doesn't show the door opening like in Resident Evil um, to you know, for load times, because the load times in this are next to none for the most part, so. Alright, well, it looks like Kate Walker has found herself in, in, uh, in this uh, a quaint little town. However, her mission has already gotten a hiccup because Anna Volreborg is already dead. So, 
time to call the boss and figure it out. We'll locate, figure out. Will the boss give her a good, a good scoop? And what about that boy Momo? Find out next time in the next episode of Siberia. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time.